choosing to place your child in residential care is the most selfless thing ever because it is, in the beginning especially, something you get by white knuckling second by second, tier by tier, moment by moment, just living for a phone call, a word, an email. It still brings up those emotions. And everybody at the Benedictine School hugged me and loved me and saw it through. And then days start coming together and there's a new normal and then there's new celebrations and there's victories and things that you never thought would happen and they start happening. So many emotions go through them, but then a year later when they see it, how their, their loved one has changed and grown, they know that it's the best decision they ever made. And we asked if we could have Tommy come to summer school here. And he was about seven years old at the time, eight years old. And he came to summer school and he had never fed himself in his life. And he came here for four weeks in the summer and when he came home, he fed himself dinner the first night he was home. And uh, that told us, hmm, something pretty special is going on there. We better take a closer look. The sisters came to the property in the late 1800s, uh, so when we talk about the history of the organization, we really have to look back that far. Uh, and during that time, uh, Sister Augustine in 1955 decided to start a small classroom for children with disabilities as a pilot program. Uh, and that pilot program then became the primary mission of the organization in 1959, and we officially became the Benedictine School. Uh, the other thing uh, that, from my perspective, is vitally important is the groundwork that they laid with the values of S the rule of St. Benedict and how that flourishes today. So th the interesting thing about our core values of hospitality, dignity of work, and compassionate caring is that they've always been part of Benedictine, but it wasn't until 2013 that we sat down and really put pen to paper and said, these are our values and this is what we want to promote. Uh, we are definitely not a one-size-fits-all organization. We, we focus on the needs of each individual child and each individual adult and adapt our program accordingly. And it's a complicated business and the professionals here at Benedictine who are charged with managing both the school, the adult program, the finances and the funding behind them, the hiring and most importantly the retention of qualified committed staff to serve these individuals. Those are the real heroes in the process because if we can't, you know, uh, inspire the staff to want to be here and to want to do the job they're asked to do, then we can't deliver for these kids and these young adults who so much need our help. So it's a special place, but it takes a really committed team focused on the mission in order to be successful. So for a residential morning supervisor, um, I come in early. Um, my day starts at 5 a.m. So I take the first 30 minutes to, you know, get the paperwork ready or whatever I need to do from the day before. They do their morning routine, like brush the hair, the teeth, make their beds. Like we have them do everything that they are. We try to make them independent as possible. So we have them do everything that a normal person does in the morning time. Like Sister Jeanette always talked about, you have to be a special person to work here because this job is it's very demanding in all ways but to see the parents faces when their child accomplished something that they wanted them to do whether it's sitting in a restaurant or just taking their leisure time and listening to music putting a, their own DVD in the TV or reading a book it's always it's always heartwarming and just priceless Uh, we've also built a very robust uh, physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy department here uh, because we find that the students also require 
that service. And we felt it very important to be able to offer a, a complete program, not only in the education residential, but also bring all those special services in of PT, OT, and speech so that they're integrated throughout the day as well as into the residential programs. Another important fact of our program is uh, both our medical and, and other therapies, uh, some of which we hold here on campus, like our music therapy, our art therapy. Others we partner with our community on, like horseback riding. And, and we tap into that community expertise so that the students here can also tap into those therapies off campus. Um, we also have 24-hour nursing care here, both on our adult as well as our school education program. As the, we've moved throughout the years, we've also moved deeper into our community uh, through our group homes, uh, through job and volunteer opportunities uh, for our students and adults. So we have this pool of people that are qualified workers and who have all kinds of training, work experience. And so they're now, instead of working in um, sheltered workshops for sub-minimum wage, we're offering these people, getting them to the interviews and getting them out there to meet people and, and showing them that, hey, you guys could hire some of these people. And, you know, that could be the answer to your lack of, um, you know, lack of staff here. Why, why should I hire somebody who, um, you know, is has more barriers? Well, because there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, you get a very devoted, um, loving, somebody good-spirited, somebody who's happy to be at work, and that's contagious. They're thankful that they're involved in their community, and they're getting paid to do a job that they want to do. Well, Benedictine has a team here who uh, provides parents with, with kids who are getting close to 21 with the kind of advice and roadmap you need to navigate the system because probably that's the second most emotional time in stewarding a special child. The first is making that tough decision to send them to a boarding school, right? But then the next one is, my gosh, what happens when school is done? and you have to enter the adult world. And there's a lot to learn, and there are a lot of options to consider, and Benedictine does a great job in that transition phase of not only preparing the child, because the child has to learn how to navigate in the real world also, uh, but preparing the parents uh, for making you know, very important decisions about what kind of care makes the most sense, not only for where is the child going to live and sleep, but what's his, day, his or her day going to look like? How are they going to spend their time? Um, so that, that's, that's a big piece of what they work on at Benedictine in the last couple of years of schooling here. And the Benedictine School has a phenomenal program where there's an opportunity to, for, um, for Jason, he's in it right now, he transitioned into one of the group homes off of campus. That was a phenomenal opportunity for me to get my first taste of what adult placement and transition is going to be like. And I am grateful that the professionals here know how to do this because uh, this isn't just Jason's experience. They make sure that I got coaching, I got help. So through this entire experience at Benedictine School, I've gotten to see what it looks like for him to start school, to learn a routine, to start getting his own independent skills, to growing and transitioning throughout his program, and now to have this independence where he's operating his own room, where he's being part of you know, his own home community, and he's starting an adulthood. And it's really neat to watch. Benedictine over the years has always partnered with community members, whether that be through businesses or, or individuals. As of today, we have around 75 community partners that we work with. Um, and, and those partnerships really help both sides. Uh, they help our adults and some students grow and learn new skill sets and, and work ethic. 
but we also hear from the businesses that we partner with about the benefit that they receive and their employees receive and how they didn't know that this opportunity or this partnership was really there for them. And, and they also take great pride in that partnership. Uh, so it's something that I think has been vital to our success over the years, but it's also a great opportunity to continue to grow into the future. How do we bring everything up to an overall state-of-the-art program from a facility standpoint here on our campus? In order to do that, uh, we're going to need the support of our local community, our donors, our legislature, uh, to meet the needs of our Marylanders, uh, because that's who we serve. We serve the students and adults of Maryland, and we need to continue to do that because the need is there, and we're going to need that increased support over the years in order to meet our goals with that facility uh, improvement plan. I'm looking forward to Jason's prom, which I can't believe. I'm looking forward to graduation. I'm looking forward to still having connections with this community and, um, and knowing this will always be a resource. No matter what, this, this becomes family, you know, and wherever uh, for adult services, whether Jason's here or in a different location, it's like he's going off to college, but this is always going to be part of his youth. And uh, I can look back on the, that first day, and it still makes, brings tears to my eyes, but the tears are, they're happy ones now.